everybody and welcome to IGB Kids Club. It's great to see you again. This week I want to start with a couple of questions in thinking time. So here's my first question for you. What is a friend? So you might want to pause the video and talk to the person that you're watching this with about what you think a friend is. And my second question is, what makes a good friend? So this week, we're looking at another story in the Bible about Jesus. And this one is all about, you guessed it, friends. So I'm going to tell you the story now, and I want you to see if you can spot where friends come in the story. As I'm telling you the story, Watch out for the pictures at the side here next to me because afterwards you can have a go at making the pictures and telling the story with me. Okay, so let's get our best listening ears on and here's the story. There was a man who couldn't walk. He just lay on his mat all day. But the man had four friends. And they wanted to help him, so they took him to Jesus. They got to the house where Jesus was. But it wasn't a house like we have. It had a flat roof. So many people came to see Jesus that they couldn't get through the door. So they climbed the stairs onto the roof. And they made a hole in the roof. They tied ropes to the mat that the man was lying on and let it down through the roof to Jesus. When Jesus saw the man coming through the roof, he said, your sins are forgiven. Some people were cross when Jesus said that. How can Jesus forgive sins? They asked. Jesus said, is it easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, pick up your mat and go home? And the man stood up straight and folded up his mat and went home. Okay, that's the end of the story. What did you think about the story? Did you spot the friends? How many friends were there? And what did they do? In a minute, I'm going to tell the story again. And if you want to, you can pause your video here and make the prop that I've been using to tell the story so that you can tell it along with me. So if you want to make the prop, all you need is four pieces of paper or card cut into strips, just like I've got here. And then if you've got paper fasteners or split pins like this at home, then you can use them to make your four pieces of paper or your four strips of paper into one long strip like this. But if you haven't got paper fasteners, it doesn't matter. You can use blue tack or you can just pop your strips of paper on a flat surface on the table and you don't need to fasten them with anything. You can just move them around to make the different shapes. So I'm going to tell the story again and see if you can follow along with your four strips of paper. Okay, so we need to start with it in a nice long line. And let's tell the story together. There was a man who couldn't walk. He just lay on his mat all day. The man had four friends. So let's see if I can remember how to make a number four. It's a bit tricky this one. So you have to fold that one up like that and then down and as our four. So the man had four friends and they wanted to help him. 
so they took him to Jesus. They got to the house where Jesus was. Let's make a house like this. But it wasn't a house like we have. It had a flat roof. Like this. So many people had come to see Jesus that they couldn't get through the door. So they climbed the stairs. Let's make some stairs like this. Up onto the roof. And what did they do when they got to the roof? Can you remember? They made a hole in the roof, didn't they? And then what did they do? They tied ropes to the mat. So there's our mat with ropes. And they let the man on the mat down through the hole in the roof to Jesus. When Jesus saw the man, he said, your sins are forgiven. But some people were cross when Jesus said that. And they asked, how can Jesus forgive sins? Jesus said, is it easier to say your sins are forgiven or to say, get up, pick up your mat and go home? And with that, the man stood up straight. So let's make a straight line. He stood up straight, folded up his mat and walked home. Okay, well done everybody. That was really good storytelling. Do you think that the friends in the story were good friends? Why or why not? Can you think of any times in your life when you've been a good friend like the people in this story? There's a very tricky bit of the story at the end, isn't there? Where Jesus says something a little strange. He says, your sins are forgiven. Then the people get cross and then Jesus asks them if it's easier to forgive sins or to make a paralyzed man walk again. Hmm, what do you think's going on there? Well, I have always found this bit in the Bible a little bit tricky to understand, and that's okay. There's actually lots of bits in the Bible that I find hard to understand. And actually, everybody has lots and lots of questions about stories in the Bible, and that's okay. In fact, I would say that it's actually good. It's good to ask questions and it's okay when we don't understand things. We don't need to understand everything. And I think God really likes it when we keep asking questions and learning and then relearning and then learning again. So let's ask some questions about this tricky bit. So the first question is, what does sin mean? Jesus uses that word sin, but what does it actually mean? And he uses the word forgiveness. So what does that mean? Why does Jesus ask the people listening if it's easier to forgive sins or to make a man walk again? What do you think he meant? For me, at the moment, the thing I've learned about reading this story with you is that Jesus reminds us that he can mend and heal things. He healed the man's body in the story and he can heal our, our hearts too. When we do bad things or when other people do bad things, it can cause pain in our hearts and in our minds, can't it? I think that this is maybe what Jesus was talking about when he uses the word sin. It's like the bad things that we do and that other people do. So Jesus says that he can forgive our sins, which I think 
is a little bit like healing the pain in our hearts or in our minds caused by bad things. So maybe you could spend some time now chatting about the story with the people in your house and see what they think about it too. Phew, that was a lot of thinking, wasn't it? And you'll be pleased to know that it's now time for activity time. So I'll see you there. So this week in activity time, the things you'll need are some scissors, some paper, so it's fine if you just want to use white paper or you can use coloured paper, it's up to you. You'll need a pipe cleaner, some string or some ribbon and some felt tips and then anything else that you want to use to decorate. You might have received one of these pots in the post from IGB and if you want to you can use the things in this pot today and if you haven't got one of these and you'd like one, then just get in contact with someone at IGB, either me or Danielle, send us a message or an email and we can get one of those sent out to you. Okay, so today we're going to have a go at making the house in the story that we read today. So the first thing that we're going to do is take our piece of paper like this and we're going to make it into a square because what shape is it at the moment? At the minute it's a rectangle isn't it and we need a square so the way we do this is we take one corner and we fold it over until the corner reaches the other side of the paper and you line it up Fold it like that and then we need to get rid of this little bit at the end, this extra bit. So we fold this down like that and then you can either tear it or you can cut it off. So I'm going to use my scissors and I'm going to cut down here. So now I've got a square piece of paper and with this square we're going to have a go at making an envelope shape. So we're going to take each of the corners and we're going to fold them into the middle like this. And it can be a little bit tricky to try and get them to line up so we just have to do our best and then fold them down. And if you've got an envelope at home, instead of making one like this, you could just use the envelope that you've already got. So if you have an envelope, you can just use that instead. Or you can make one like this. So that's made our envelope shape. And you can see that this envelope shape also looks a little bit like a house, doesn't it? It's the same shape as a house. But can you remember in our story it said that the house didn't have a pointy roof like most of the houses we know here but actually it had a flat roof didn't it like this. So we're going to turn it over and we're going to make it look a little bit more like a house. So I'm going to take my felt tips or crayons and I'm going to draw some windows door at the bottom, maybe another window over here and then I'm going to draw some bricks I think but really you can decorate your house however you want to so you don't have to draw bricks like me, I'm going to just do squares. You could stick pom-poms on it, you could stick sequins on it, you could put glitter on your house. You can make your house however you want to make it. Okay. So then when we've done that, we're going to do some writing at the top of our house. And we're going to describe the house because the house 
was full, wasn't it? It was full of people and that's why they had to cut a hole in the roof. So at the top of our piece of paper here, we're going to write the house was full, exclamation mark. And then we can write what could they do? The house was full, what could they do? What did they do in this story? What did the friends do? They cut a hole in the roof, didn't they? So we can open up our envelope to make a hole in the roof into the house. So now we need to make the man on the mat, the man that couldn't walk, that Jesus healed. So you can see I've had a go at making a man on a mat here and I've used a pipe cleaner. So let's see if I can show you how to make a man out of a pipe cleaner. And I have to admit that it took me quite a few tries to get this right. So don't worry if you can't do it the first time and I possibly won't be able to do it again. <laughs> so let's see. So the first thing we need to do is make the head. So you take the top of your pipe cleaner, fold it over to make a circle and then just wrap the end round like that to hold it in place. Okay, then we need to make the arms. So we make one arm like this and fold it over because then we need to make the other arm as well. So we're going to make two arms like this. Then we need a body. So we make a body like this. And then we need to make the legs. Oops. So there's the body and then we need to make the legs. So I'm gonna fold my man up like this to make one leg and then down the other side to make the other leg. Oh dear didn't go very well. Okay, there we go. That's almost a man. It's not quite as good as the first one I made, is it? You can see that it's quite tricky to do, but you might, we need to just practice a few times at home until you've made a little person like this. Okay, then we need to take our other piece of paper and it can be the same piece of paper, the same colour or a different colour and cut a mat and then we pop our little man on the mat like this and you can see I've just sellotaped mine down on this one and then you need to take the string and we're going to thread the string through the top of the mat to hold it in place so I'm just going to fold my piece of paper like that and take the scissors to cut two little slits in the top of the paper like that and then I can take my ribbon or my string and just thread it through so it comes through the other side there we go and so then you've got your man stuck onto your mat with the string attached to the mat and you could even do it in four corners if you wanted to because there was four friends wasn't there and then what you can do once you've done all of that is you can have a go at seeing if you can lower your man through the hole in the roof so you can tell the story and get to the part where it says the house was full what could they do they made a hole in the roof and then see if you can lower your man oh it's a bit tricky lower your man into the through the hole in the roof into the house to see Jesus. Hi everybody, I hope you had lots of fun in activity time. It's now time for prayer time. So let's pray together. Dear Jesus, thank you that there are so many stories in the Bible about you which help us to understand a little bit more about who you are. 
Thank you that today we had space to think about lots of different things, like being good friends and how you do amazing things like healing our, our hearts. As we grow, please help us to keep learning more and more about you and to never be afraid to stop asking questions about you. Please help us to remember how much you love us and how special we are to you. Amen. Okay everyone, that's all we've got time for. It was great to see you this week and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Bye!